you either like making terrain or you don't. There doesn't really seem to be any middle ground on this topic. In my last video I made these things incredibly quickly, a cut and a glue and they were done. I used a laser cutter but many of my subscribers told me using my files you could just make them by hand with a hobby knife. So I set out to challenge myself and see what else I could design and make quickly that I'd had in my head for many years. Terrain you can cut with a laser if you have one, but with card and a hobby knife if you don't. Can I make an entire set of fully modular terrain with interchangeable parts based on the Eden Prime colony from Mass Effect? And considering the last video was the first time I'd ever used a cutting machine in my life, keep watching and we'll see whether I succeeded or just went up in a massive laser induced fireball. I didn't by the way, the fact that I'm sitting here meant that didn't happen. Safety first guys. Ever since I was a kid I wanted a table full of my own terrain. Not the stuff you had to buy, but stuff you could make yourself to your exact specifications. As a very young kid I scratch built Middle Earth to use with this because I had no money. Other than being older now the money part hasn't really changed. Looking back it was terrible. Old model railway junk, cardboard, paper and lots of PVA glue. But I was happy and so were my easy to please friends. As long as they could move Gandalf around a half decent table they didn't care if the trees were green cotton balls glued to twigs scavenged from my parents back garden. To us it was a little slice of Middle Earth. Less Helms Deep, more Underwhelms Cheap. Today however, I'm going to design and build something else that I absolutely loved when I first saw it. The Eden Prime Colony from the Mass Effect games. If you've never played that awesome trilogy then Eden Prime looks like this. I considered building the Citadel, but I couldn't get my hands on that much MDF. You see, I figured the terrain like this would work in the ash wastes for my Ironhead prospectors as well as for Stargrave on a planet with trees. Don't misunderstand, I love Games Workshop terrain, to a point, but using it in some non-GW games, skulls and gothic archways just don't sit right. Who decided to decorate their environment with the skulls of their own species anyway? It's a bit of a weird decor choice no matter how badly you hate your enemy. And let's not forget that in the far future our homes will apparently be built with all the pipes and electrical wiring on the outside of the wall. Even the Necrons got that one right. I decided to design and create my own to be a fully modular interchangeable set of terrain based on Eden Prime. And I'm sorry if this video took a little bit longer than usual, this turned out to be a long complicated process of learning sci-fi architecture and assembly techniques in two weeks. The first time I'd ever touched a cutting machine was a month ago. But I'm nothing if not committed, probably should be committed, and I'm never content to just design, redesign and modify terrain that only works one way. I know I said you weren't going to get a load of videos with laser cut parts but this one I think is worth it and as I said in the beginning I've been reliably informed that armed with a hobby knife and some patience you can cut this all out of thick card or foam core by hand if you wanted. To get a bit more familiar with how to design my own sci-fi terrain this was my prototype and I didn't like it at all. I felt it was far too busy and I had this nagging feeling I'd seen something like it before somewhere and was creating it from some forgotten memory. I couldn't for the life of me remember where so I erred on the side of copyright caution and just scrapped it. This exercise did teach me several valuable lessons. How to build things that actually fit together and more importantly how accurate you need to be with the design files. The things in my previous video were relatively simple. You could make a load of mistakes and it'd still kind of work. Instead we're going to make this. Actually we're going to make this and variations on this so you can build an entire table any way you see fit just by cutting out different modular parts. Before we start however I wanted to do a quick introduction into designing parts that fit together for those who might want to embark on designing and making their own stuff from scratch. And this principle is the same for card or MDF whether you cut with a laser or by hand it's the same. I discovered that if you decided to design your own terrain that assembles quickly and easily there's only really four methods that you need to master tabs, slots, holes and the simplest one of all, glue. A tab is just a sticky out bit that slides into a gap on the joining piece of equal size, usually on the edge. So on this it's just a bunch of tabs and gaps placed precisely to form a cube taking into account how thick the material is. A slot is just a long cut out the thickness of your material on both pieces that literally just slide together like this. And holes are just well holes cut to the same size as a tab 
for when you want to join things together, not via an edge. And glue was just the simple option for when the other three would be a waste of time, like just sticking these two flat faces together. Most of this is just reverse engineered from buying any old MDF kit and examining how it's built. Once you've figured all this out, you can just draw whatever you want in your software, add the tabs, slots and holes, always keeping in mind the thickness of your MDF or card. I mean, it's a little bit more complex than that, but it's pretty quick to spot your errors because get one joint out of place and your model won't work. The exact same problem they have at London Fashion Week. The vector software you use to design files isn't important. I use Illustrator, but you could easily use CorelDRAW, Inkscape, which is totally free, Affinity or many others. As long as it draws lines and shapes, it'll work. Right, on to this terrain. Now, obviously this is more complex than a simple cube, but the way you do it is exactly the same. I mean, this is really just a modified cuboid with some holes cut out, tabs added and some etching on the sides. These Zone Motellus columns are just cubes with detail molded onto it when you boil it down. If we take away the etching and the cutouts, you can see it's just the same principle as our cube, just longer, thinner with chamfered corners. It's really only just a bunch of random lines. Same thing Robert Downey Jr. allegedly said to the cops before he cleaned up and became Iron Man. Because Line Man probably wouldn't have made a billion dollars. Once we've got our cutting template, it can be cut by laser, by hand, a cricket, or I guess you could even 3D print the part, 3 mil thick. Maybe even send it to a small factory in a foreign country where children cut things out for 2 cents a week. With all the bits ready, the assembly is just an easy puzzle. And most of these parts can only go together one way anyway even the interchangeable ones. The assembly is as easy as building a cube with bits that just slot into other bits to build the main frame. The two main end panels have a raised section with etched panelling which we glue onto the end, making sure the etching on both parts faces outwards. All the support walls are built first with the etching facing inwards and then the door and slide mechanism just slides under here. Then just slot these into the end wall. This whole section we can now just drop onto our floor piece. All the external panelling just slots into place depending on its length and just drop on the roof and slide in the door. When built, this becomes the base building. It's fully assembled and the best part is this is not glued together. Obviously the panels under the bottom here don't stay in unglued but to dry fit what you're planning to glue, this is more than enough. I designed it this way on purpose, so I didn't need instructions. I'm not the kind of person who reads instructions anyway. I'm one of those men that knows better than instructions. Instructions are for people who lack adventure and hate jigsaw puzzles. So I did it the way I did because one, I wanted to be able to drive in everything first and have it hold itself together while I was fiddling. And two, because I designed a whole bunch of interchangeable parts so this building can become many buildings. There's currently about four different roof options and about five different wall options, so with doors, with windows or without. And there's a bunch of side panel options for numbering different buildings, all with unique etched panel lines just for that super easy pin washing. Once you've figured out what building you want, then you can glue it together. With the template, you can make about 20 or more different buildings. It's probably more than that, but I got bored doing the math. Although hold off on the glue for a bit. Let's see what else we can make first. And not to skimp on this, the roofing doesn't require gluing at all and comes on and off so you can play inside. And unlike many MDF kits, this door is not just etched in. A thing I never understood. You don't think we might want to open the door? Just cut the damn door out! I built this one to slide in and out, which will come in super handy later in the video. But, most of you guys know me by now, 20 plus building options just wasn't enough. I wasn't satisfied being able to make just some buildings. I wanted all the buildings. Remember when I said don't glue the building just yet? Well, I decided to invent a part that would allow you to quickly join two buildings together. And this is literally as simple as not putting on this end piece and replacing it with this joiner. I had originally designed this piece to be permanently attached to any building, so you just couldn't make loads of buildings and glue this joiner on whenever you wanted a larger one. However, after playing around, I thought there might be times you want to pop it on and pop it off. I added these little structural pieces so the outside panels will hold in place if you do decide to regularly swap out the end cap for a joiner, but these are not really needed for making a solid glued building. Again, this piece assembles really quickly and holds itself together without glue. But again, glue it when you're happy, and you don't have to glue the roof section on this if you want to be able to see inside it from above. With this part, 
you can now take two buildings and make one long building. Or, as we'll see later, make an extension. Great, now we can make 40 plus buildings by joining two together. Right, what else can we do to increase those options even further? Well, this one sits directly on the ground, doesn't it? It's good to have a ground option, but what about adding this? A simple riser that can be moved around. This one just slots together. You don't even need to glue this if you don't want to. That way, if you don't use it as a riser, you can use it as scatter or a makeshift ladder. You can always put buildings on top of other buildings to create height just like Eden Prime, but this riser is also designed to sit neatly between the two roof connectors. So you can stack buildings with risers or without. Having a riser will double again the amount of options we can make. Some buildings flat on the ground, some slightly elevated, buildings on top of buildings. I designed two different styles of riser for this for variation, but also so I could easily connect other pieces. 80 plus building options. Okay, we're getting there, but I want more. Maybe though, you want a higher building that doesn't need to sit on the roof of another. So what about taller risers so you can stand buildings next to each other? Or out on their own? And I guess we'll need two options on this. One to work with ground buildings and one to work with buildings that are already on small risers. These will get you even more levels. These ones you will need to glue for stability and I created some optional structural supports that go in between the legs at the bottom. If you don't add the optional supports, they do have the ability to go over the top of a building and allow you to place them at slight angles, if you want, because Eden Prime. Ah, but the doors on all these options are now raised up from the ground. And if we have buildings straddling the roofs of others, you have to be able to climb, right? Yes, you do. I guess we're probably going to need some stairs. Oh, and ladders. Eden Prime has them, so we're having them. The ladders come in two heights, one for ground level and one for riser level, and they tuck neatly underneath and the stairs slide neatly up to the doors. They also have a secondary purpose, which I'll show you later on. Okay, these solve the climbing problem, but you can't have a sci-fi colony with just one sized building, even when you can join two together. Let's create a smaller half building in exactly the same way we made the longer one. And yes, this one comes with optional walls and its own baby riser. This can be a standalone building that sits on any riser, but also serves as a great extension to make a long building just a bit longer. Just like with the long building, you can use this join piece to connect buildings together. Short to long, short to short, long to long, long to short to long to short to long to long. You get the point. Okay, I tried to calculate how many options there are at this point, but I gave up because my head ached. It's a lot. We've now got so many options, there's nothing more we can do, right? Wrong. We've got to have a way of joining buildings at the sides. I mean, it's the least we could have. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the door comes in and out, just slots in. What if we had a piece that would connect to where the door is, and had the ability to connect to all the other buildings just like the join piece? Let's design one of those. Here it is, the right angle joiner. Just a slight modification on the joiner piece, which also comes on and off if you wanted. Now, wherever you've got a door, you slide this piece in place and it tucks neatly underneath and over the top. Once connected, it can sit on risers just like all the other buildings. This lets you make a T-junction piece with an open door to move from one building to the next. And for ease, if you don't glue the roof on, you can see inside this one too. In fact, I made two different roofs for this piece. One for an open door and one for a closed door. Did you make anything else, you ask? Well, strangely, yes. I didn't finish here. I found I wanted a larger building with a larger door. Maybe for vehicles or storage, perhaps as the centerpiece for a table. I don't know, I just wanted a bigger building and to see what else I could do with the designs I've made. You've pretty much got the gist of how these things go together now, so here it is. The large building. One large door, one small, removable roof. It has its own riser and a ramp for getting to the big door. And the right angle joiner works on both the large door and the small one. In fact, the ramp works everywhere too. So that's it, right? The end. Well, no. To make it even more like Eden Prime, it was missing one thing. Bits of raised decking on some of the buildings. I didn't really want to go overboard with this because I was going for visual variation rather than slapping decking on every building. I decided to limit it to one long deck, one short deck, and two corner decks. They're all left as separate pieces so they can be moved around and placed as needed. The 45 degree cut allows it to go around corners would join into longer sections. There's holes on both sides, so the railings can be swapped out and put on either side. They just push into place or can be glued. 
and the ends of each bit of decking serve two purposes. You can cap them with a railing, like this, or the design allows you to slide in the same stairs we created for the doors. So you can have decking with stairs at both ends or just one. And with stairs at both ends, the decking doubles as a walkway. I did try to cover every possibility here. And those ladders that tucked neatly underneath, if you want to use these on the decking, just rotate them around the other way. Easy. If you wanted, you could cut enough of these parts to deck and walk with the entire terrain. There's nothing complex about the decking at all. The only difference between the design and assembly of these is the treading on the surface is cut from thinner grey board. But if you were doing it, you could just use mesh, crochet mesh, or any other thin textured material. I designed this kit to be basically just three buildings with interchangeable parts, two joiner pieces to make even more buildings, and some risers. Throw in some ladders, stairs and decking, and you can build anything. An entire colony. Building on the ground, building on risers, building with decking, building with walkways, building on top of building, building over building on risers, etc, etc, etc. I've now got the amount of possibilities I'm happy with. All from three templates. Looking at this stuff now, with all the pieces assembled, I realised I had also just accidentally made 3D Space Hulk terrain. If you leave off the roofs, the whole thing can easily become rooms and corridors. A few straws glued in as pipework and it's there. With enough buildings and enough joiner pieces, I'd have a fully dysfunctioning Hulk. All I'd really need to design now are a cross junction and change the grid of the floor etchings and I could build an entire Space Hulk. I'll get onto that now. I'm going to be releasing these files to my Patreon over time as I tweak and finalise the designs, and I'm also looking at that new commerce platform that Patreon just launched, so non-patrons can grab these too if they were interested. Being a Patreon member will be the cheaper option, because benefits for the channel supporters, of course. I've tried to design something that would be cool to play on, have a ton of options, and be a viable option to add to my Ash Wastes terrain as a settlement for the Ironhead Prospectors, because there's no way Space Dwarves live in tents, like Sand People. How does this work though? How do you actually cut what you want? I was originally going to say it's quicker with a laser cutter, and it is if you want all the etchings and triangle cutouts, but I clocked myself doing this with cardboard and a hobby knife for the base building cutouts, with no etchings or complex triangles, and it took about an hour, including gluing, which is exactly the same time it takes to cut and etch one A4 sheet of MDF, and many buildings have three or four sheets. But even the speed of cutting this with a laser is 10 times faster than 3D printing at all. It's probably much more beneficial just to 3D print pipes and vents and glue those onto these. So it's actually quicker to make this in card by hand, surprisingly. You just won't get all the panel line detail etched in. But if you were painting it up, you can literally just spray and draw them all on with a fine liner or a sharpie. If you want a laser cutter or are thinking of getting one, I can highly recommend Lightburn as your cut controller software. Yes, it's the paid option, but it's the better option. The Illustrator files I've created for these just import directly into it, and because I've colour-coded the lines, they'll come in on different layers. This way you can set the blue line to cut, and the red lines to etch. You'll need to play around with the speed and power to get the etching depth to be to your liking, but all the hard design work is done for you. The absolute easiest way to do this with Lightburn is to import the Illustrator, delete or duplicate the parts you don't want, keep the bits you do, add your settings, and cut. Want a new wall? Cut a new wall. Want a new roof? Cut a new roof. More ladders, more stairs, more decking. Just cut them all. If you want to get familiar with the file first, before you do any importing or cutting, I can highly recommend Inkscape. It's completely free software and will open the Illustrator file without you needing to own Illustrator. You can play around with the file, arrange all the parts you want, and then save as an SVG file, which will also open directly in Lightburn. I'll put a link to Inkscape in the description for you guys. Once you've got all the bits cut out and ready, just dry fit them together into your chosen building and then glue it when you're happy. Or seal and paint all the parts first and then glue it, it's up to you. If you do use a laser for this, and as someone pointed out in the comments on my previous video, a laser is a powerful tool. It can be dangerous. Just the same as you would for any power tool, I use specialist eye protection, a good filtered mask, and practice fire safety. Don't walk away and leave this machine unless you can monitor it. I now actually use an old baby monitor with a camera that I had lying around. The main files will work with any material that's 3mm thick, like MDF or plywood. I picked up packs of 10 sheets of laser MDF from Amazon for £8.95. 
To make everything you see in the video, it took about 20 sheets in total, so about £17.90. So if you had access to a laser cutter and the time to cut and etch it all, you could fill a 4x4 table for about 30 quid and just keep adding new buildings as you wanted them. Okay, so what about card? Almost the entire design is mostly all straight lines, so a ruler and a hobby knife will do it. And you can also get your hands on 3mm grey board, 3mm foam core, 3mm cardstock, and even use 3mm corrugated card. If you can get your hands on some 3mm thick material that you can cut by hand, all these files will work just as well. And that's it! An entire table of sci-fi terrain based on Eden Prime you can use in anything from Necromunda, Kill Team to Stargrave and many more. Either cut with a laser or by hand. Painted rusty, painted weathered, or painted clean. And I'll be making all these files available on my Patreon when I've fully tested them. I'd like to say a big thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and for the discussions we've had on Discord. That's the state of play for today. We'll see you next time.